Hello everyone, my name is Fridolin and welcome to this brief introduction where I will show you how you can easily migrate your already existing Python S2I application so that it starts using dot. If you don't know what S2I stands for, S2I means uh, source to image and it's a build process specific for OpenShift that can turn your Git repository into a container image that is subsequently run inside an OpenShift cluster. If you don't know, TOT, TOT is a recommendation engine for uh, Python applications and Python software stacks. TOT can give you guidance how to deploy and how to run your applications in order to uh, get the most value uh, out of your application. In this demo, I will use TOT S2I, that is a command line tool. And this command line tool is published on PyPI, the Python package index. You can install it easily by uh, running pip install dot s2i. Uh, the tool itself has quite extensive uh, description. Uh, you can follow all the all the information, but I will show the most relevant parts uh, for migrating Python s2i uh, so, uh, so that it starts uh, using so that your application starts using dot. I will also use an OpenShift application and uh, let's uh, deploy it. Uh, this application is created using OC tool, uh, specifically OC create-f and uh, supplying a manifest file that is in this case OpenShift YAML. Once the application is imported into the uh, OpenShift cluster, we uh, start build and our application will be built inside the cluster. While the build is happening, uh, let's have a look at the Git repository that contains our application uh, that is built. Uh, this repository uh, contains just a few files. You are already familiar with the OpenShift YAML file, that is the manifest file stating uh, what objects uh, need to be created inside OpenShift cluster in order to run your application. So here uh, we can see we are creating a build config uh, that states how to uh, build application. Then there is also deployment config that states how to deploy our application. And there are defined two image streams. Uh, one image stream uh, is, uh, is containing builder container image. That is the container image used for building the application. And then there is image stream that contains the built uh, artifact, the build container image, uh, that is a result of the build process. So uh, the, resulting, uh, build, the resulting container image will be pushed into a so example TensorFlow uh, image stream. Our builder container image is a UBI 8, a universal base image in version 8, uh, which uses Python 3.6. This builder container image is published by uh, Red Hat. If we take a look at other files uh, that are present in this uh, GitHub repository, you can find app.py, and that's the Python script or the Python application that will be run inside uh, the OpenShift cluster. The application is very simple to demonstrate uh, usage. Uh, here is an import statement that uh, imports TensorFlow library, and then uh, in the endless loop, uh, we are printing a constant to uh, to the terminal each three seconds, and this uh, constant is a string, hello dot by TensorFlow. So the application is very simple. The repository also contains requirements for our application. Uh, in this case, uh, these requirements are stated in the requirements txt file. And uh, we said that we want to run TensorFlow in version 2.0.0. The repo also contains the readme file. This readme file is basically a transcript of demo that I'm uh, showing as of now. So if anything is unclear or you want to copy your commands into uh, terminal in order to replicate uh, what I'm uh, showing, you can follow uh, these instructions and you will see the same results as uh, in our case. Okay, so let's go to OpenShift Web Console that shows us an uh, overview of our, our cluster. And let's go to Build Sections. 
and let's go to builds. As you can see, we created a build four minutes ago. The build is called STI example TensorFlow 1. Uh, the build corresponds to build config that we created, and the build config is S2I example TensorFlow. Let's go to logs, and here we can see that, uh, uh, that UBI 8 Python 3.6 builder container image created uh, an application by installing dependencies, so it collected uh, TensorFlow 2.00, and then uh, PIP's resolution algorithm installed uh, direct dependencies of TensorFlow, but also transitive dependencies of TensorFlow, so that TensorFlow uh, can run inside the cluster. So here you can see that, for example, there were installed dependencies such as NumPy, gRPC.io, and uh, others that are required to run uh, our application using TensorFlow 2.00. Let's go to bots. And while I was showing the build, uh, the application was deployed. So let's go to application logs. And as you can see, our application is successfully running inside the cluster. The application prints hello tot by TensorFlow, as we've seen in sources. But if you take a look more closer, you can see these messages that are printed uh, by TensorFlow, uh, by a uh, library. So here, for example, the very first one is your CPU supports instructions that this TensorFlow binary was not compiled to use. Uh, these are AVX instructions and uh, by using these instructions, you can gain uh, performance uh, benefits when running your machine learning models uh, that can uh, benefit from ABX uh, instructions. Okay, so application is running. And while the application is running, let's try to fix this uh, informa informative message. So let's go to terminal. And you already know that we installed a tool that is called .s2i uh, from PyPI. So uh, this uh, library .s2i provides uh, .s2i command, and here you can see UC and uh, brief help. The very first uh, command that is available is images, and this command shows currently available images uh, that are uh, published by .team, sorry, .s2i images. Here you can see two images. The very first one is s2i.ubi8 Python 3.6, and this container image is a drop-in replacement for UBI 8 Python 3.6 uh, container image or builder container image as published by uh, Red Hat. The other one is Fedora 31 base, and it's running Python 3.7. The other command in, can import these images in your OpenShift cluster, but we will not run this command, but I will show you how you can import images inside, inside your cluster in one, basically, transaction. Uh, that will be run uh, using migrate command. So migrate command can migrate your already existing Python S2i application running within the cluster so that it starts using dot. We will take a look at it in details in a few seconds. The other command is patch. Uh, this command can patch your manifest files present uh, on your disk drive uh, so that these manifest files start using TOTS uh, builder container images and uh, your application, uh, once deployed, will uh, be running uh, TOTS uh, container images. So that's more like offline operation. Then you can also uh, run report commands uh, that reports back uh, what's uh, available inside the cluster. And then there is the version command that simply prints .s2i version. So let's run uh, report command. This command accepts one uh, option, and that is a namespace uh, in which our application runs and uh, from which namespace uh, this report should be genera generated. So uh, our namespace is called .s2i demo. .s2i, the tool that we are running, runs OC command under the hood. So the prerequisite for running .s2i is to have OC command installed uh, inside your environment. 
have it available on your path. And uh, also it requires that you are logged in into the cluster and obviously you have uh, privileges uh, to uh, operate in the given namespace. So uh, here we can see uh, the generated report. As you can see, our application is called s 2 example TensorFlow. This is the name of build or build configuration that is uh, used. You can see uh, the strategy, maybe source. It basically says uh, this application is S2i. And here you can see the builder container image that is UBI 8 Python 3.6 as published by Red Hat. We've already seen this in our image stream in the OpenShift YAML uh, configure or manifest file. And you can also see the image tag that is used. So this is a report of our namespace. Uh, now uh, let's try to migrate our application so that it starts using Dot. Uh, I already prepared a command for it and I will describe uh, uh, what's happening. So this is the command that I prepared. You already know dot s2i, the tool uh, that uh, we are describing in this demo that is available on PyPI, and you already know its subcommand that is migrate. Uh, this subcommand requires namespace in which uh, it should operate. So in this case, it's dot s2i demo. Then there is additional uh, option or flag uh, that states uh, insert and vars. Uh, vars. Uh, it means that uh, environment variables that can tweak build configuration are automatically or builds are automatically inserted or injected into uh, build configuration and are available for uh, two users. Uh, I will show what environment variables uh, will be injected in a few seconds. You can find it in TOTS. You can find all of them in TOTS uh, documentation. Then there is uh, another option that is S2i TOT, and it says uh, what uh, builder container image uh, should be used. Uh, this is the TOTS enabled uh, builder container image. So we picked S2i TOT UBI Python 3.6. Uh, the other option is import image. It basically says uh, import this image into uh, OpenShift cluster. And this is the option that uh, simplifies uh, or mimics the import image command and is uh, run in one shot during uh, migration. Then there is additional option that is called trigger build. And what this option does, when your uh, build configuration does not state uh, build trigger on config change, meaning uh, a new build should be created once you change build configuration. Uh, if this uh, configuration option is not present in build config, uh, this option will automatically trigger builds for, for uh, those build configs. So uh, by supplying it, you are sure that all uh, builder, build configurations that are affected uh, trigger um, builds. Then there is an environment variable that is called total requirements format, uh, and it's equal to pip. Uh, this environment variable is consumed by tot s2i, and it simply says uh, that you should, or the builder container image should use requirements format as used by pip. Uh, meaning uh, requirements.txt file uh, that, is, that should be present inside your repository. Another option is, for example, using uh, ePenv. In that case, uh, we, the builder container image is uh, looking for pip file and pip file log, uh, so these ePenv specific uh, files. So this is the command that will migrate our application so that it starts using dot. As I want to review what changes will be done to my application inside the cluster, uh, I first run this command using the dry run option. And in that case, uh, no changes will be applied to the cluster, but rather I can review uh, what's happening and what changes are made to the cluster. Here you can see warning, so uh, dry run does not trigger a build. So even though we supplied dry run option, uh, dry uh, trigger build option, the dry run uh, disables uh, this option, and also no uh, container image will be imported into OpenShift registry, so no image stream will 
be created. Here you can see build config uh, that was pulled from, from the cluster and adjusted. So this build configuration starts using uh, .in builds. Uh, here you can see the Git repository uh, that uh, refers to the application that is built. You already know uh, this, this application, this dot station uh, and uh, organization and S2I example uh, migration uh, repository available inside uh, this organization. Here you can see injected uh, environment variables. So these are dot specific environment variables and these are the variables that tweak how uh, the build process should behave. So you can find already known TAMOS requirements format environment variable uh, that is set to pip. So the build process will take a look at uh, requirements txt present in the uh, Git repository. But you can also uh, find other configuration options such as dot error fallback. Uh, if that is set to one, uh, if there is anything wrong during the build uh, and uh, this failure is caused by TOT, uh, the build will still proceed and there will be used uh, the same behavior as, uh, as uh, the builder container image uh, as, no, as no TOT specific builder container image would be used to build the application. As you can see, uh, the image stream tag is adjusted and it uses our S2I.UBI Python 3.6 builder container image. Once uh, our uh, changes are reviewed, we can apply, apply these changes to the cluster. So uh, let's run it. You get informative, me informative messages such as uh, what build configuration uh, was found. Uh, then uh, that uh, the build config was patched, uh, that the, the environment variables were inserted, and uh, finally the changes were applied to the cluster. Here you can see uh, image stream that uh, has been imported into the cluster, and that is s2i.ubi8 Python 3.6 uh, that corresponds to the same named uh, builder container image with dot capabilities. Okay, so let's check cluster and let's check what changes were uh, uh, done. So let's go to builds and as you can see, uh, another build was triggered. As we provided uh, the trigger build configuration option. And this build uh, now uses S2I and dot uh, enabled S2I builder container image. Let's go to logs. And uh, once the container image is pull, pulled from OpenShift uh, registry, one of the very first operations are hardware and software uh, discovery. What does it mean? Uh, S2I builder container image uh, checks what uh, hardware is available on the node where the application is built. So it found a CPU family and CPU model that corresponds to Intel Xeon processor. Uh, it didn't find any CUDA version, so no GPU computation will be enabled. Uh, then there is also a software discovery, so the tool finds what Python version or Python uh, interpreter uh, version you are using and uh, other, uh, other uh, stuff, such as what platform uh, you are using. These uh, things that are detected are subsequently uh, used in uh, configuration uh, that is automatically generated during the build. And here you can see uh, the content of a configuration file that states uh, all necessary bits uh, that were uh, found during hardware and software discovery. Besides that, it also states a host where uh, Todd's deployment lives in and uh, to where uh, these configuration options and additional application requirements are uh, sent to. Uh, you can also see requirements format that is used. Uh, in this case, uh, we configured uh, the builder co uh, container image to use. Uh, requirements txt by supplying uh, pip uh, requirements format value. Here you can see that we detect uh, rel 
uh, operating system, uh, even though we are using UBI 8 con container image as a base, uh, UBI 8 is ABI compatible with RHEL, so that's why the tooling detects uh, RHEL, in this case in version 8.2. Then uh, there is also expanded information about hardware, so you can find CPU family, CPU model. You can also find Python version, uh, uh, so interpreter uh, that we are using. Uh, as you already know, uh, there is no CUDA version, and we ask for stable uh, recommendation type. So TOT provides few recommendation types, and uh, what it means it basically says what type of uh, software stack will be installed uh, in order to run your uh, application. So you can have latest, greatest software, but you can also have a stable software or most uh, performing software for your uh, application. Then there is platform uh, that you already know. Once this uh, hardware and software discovery is done, the next step is uh, static source code analysis that can be uh, turned off. And in this static source code analysis, uh, Todd checks what parts of libraries you are using, so it can drive contextual, contextual uh, recommendations. What does it mean? Uh, if you're running a uh, convolutional neural network, uh, Todd can detect it and uh, to gain more performance for convolutional neural networks, uh, it can uh, recommend you different stack uh, than uh, when, when running different type of neural networks, for example. Uh, all of this is subsequently sent to Todd. So uh, here we can see that uh, uh, all the relevant bits were uh, submitted to Todd. Just to recap, uh, there was submitted uh, a result of static source code analysis, uh, the configuration of, of your uh, application, uh, meaning uh, what hardware, what software uh, is present, uh, and uh, requirements for your application. So in, if you recall correctly, we required TensorFlow in version 2.00. It's important to state here that you are building your application and you want to have uh, these contextual and uh, recommendations uh, by Todd, you need to make sure that um, your, applica your application is built on the same node where it actually runs if you do not have a homogeneous uh, cluster. Uh, this can be achieved by node pinning, uh, so uh, you are sure that uh, build and uh, the application uh, deployed is running uh, on the same uh, node within the cluster. Once uh, the advice is computed, the recommendations that are coming out of TOT, there is printed some information, so uh, you can find recommended step report. Here you can see uh, information that builds produced by AI COE are optimized for performance. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, there was uh, recommended a different software stack uh, that uses some optimized uh, uh, artifacts. We will uh, take a look at it. Then uh, there is some informative message that uh, there is used Python 3.6. And here you can see a log file uh, that is compatible with uh, pip tools and it states uh, what uh, indices are, are used in order to uh, get these uh, packages. This means that TOTS recommendations are cross-index. So in Python universe, your packages are usually published on some package index uh, that provides them, and TOTS can uh, do a uh, resolution that is uh, using different packages from uh, different indices. This log file also states hashes, uh, so uh, that uh, there is verified provenance of these libraries uh, during the installation. So, uh, as you can see, uh, once done, uh, there is also a printed pip file log that's for uh, additional tooling around Todd. And uh, here, in few lines below, you can see that uh, these 
uh, requirements or these libraries that were resolved are actually installed into the environment. So you can see that uh, these uh, files are installed. And uh, what's important here, you can find, for example, TensorFlow. Uh, uh, that is collected from AICOE specific uh, index uh, that is uh, present on TensorFlow by .station Ninja, and these are community supported builds of TensorFlow. The other packages are uh, obtained from the PyPI, the Python package index, and um, these errors are not relevant in, in this case. Uh, because these packages were not found on our our uh, AICOE index, but rather they were uh, picked from uh, from PyPI. So these errors are not errors, but uh, rather warnings. Once the application is built, it's pushed into OpenShift's internal registry, and uh, the build was completed. Uh, let's have a look at uh, deployed pods. And here we can see that we are running uh, as to an example TensorFlow uh, in version two. So let's have a look at logs. Again, we see hello told by TensorFlow. Uh, that's the message we are expecting when TensorFlow is uh, correctly installed. If we scroll up, you can see that uh, warnings were reduced. Uh, we still see your CPU uh, supports instructions that this TensorFlow binary was not compiled to use. But if we take a look at it closer, uh, it's AVX 5.12, and uh, we are running TensorFlow with uh, AVX 2. Uh, this build is uh, uh, not capable of running AVX 5.12, uh, and we don't have TensorFlow builds uh, with this. Uh, with these instructions enabled, but still you can you can gain performance as uh, these AVX instructions in version two uh, are um, or TensorFlow uses uh, AVX in uh, AVX two. So uh, our application is running and it's and it is using uh, optimized TensorFlow uh, for our use case. Uh, another thing uh, we can show is basically port again. So let's run s 2 y report on our namespace just to double check uh, what changes were done to our cluster. And this uh, report now generates uh, information that uh, we are using s 2 i dot ubi 8 Python 3.6 container image as a builder container image. And this is the container image with TOT capabilities. So uh, that's how the application can be easily migrated so that it uses uh, TOT. Uh, I, will I will put links to documentation, uh, links to uh, relevant GitHub repositories in the description down below. And I would like to thank you for your patience and uh, fingers crossed uh, with your applications and uh, hopefully this tooling will be helpful to you. So, see you next time.